Looking back at the year of 2023, there were a lot of great games that came out within the calendar year, with some getting a little more spotlight than others. Arguably, my favorite game that came out last year was Alan Wake 2 from Remedy Entertainment. Nearly every aspect of that game was top tier quality, from the story, to the gameplay, and the presentation. After completing what was a pretty lengthy game and diving into the new game plus mode a little later on, I was happy and content with my time played on the game. Then Sam Lake decides to dance his happy ass out onto the Summer Games Fest stage, and drops the trailer for the first expansion, titled Night Springs, along with the heavily requested photo mode. Oh yeah, and it was available the next day. So the next day, I took a small break from Destiny 2's The Final Shape, which I've been neck deep in for the last basically week and a half, and decided to hop into the Night Springs expansion. But what followed was a short yet fun experience that lasted roughly two hours or so, depending on your playstyle. And now this expansion is playable if you've purchased the deluxe edition of the game, as well as the deluxe upgrade path that will also include the second expansion, the lake house, sometime this fall, and will run you about 20 bucks. It also comes with a few other items for the base game, but enough talk about that. Let's take a journey into the weird and wacky world of Night Springs from writer Alan Wake, presented to you by Warland Door. You could save the writer and the very soul of literature. Something was different. Try the coffee. One of the biggest components of this DLC is that you aren't playing as either Saga or Alan, but characters that exist within the world of Alan Wake, and each of these being split up into their own self-contained story. Each of these stories are presented as one-off episodes that Alan Wake wrote in the vein of a show called Night Springs that he used to write for back in the early to late 90s. What we play are those screenplays presented by the man Warland Door in a weird Twilight Zone-esque format along with the same sort of intro. The first one has you playing as Alan's number one fan, Rose. This sees you going through her normal work schedule at the diner until she's tasked with saving Alan from his evil hack twin brother Scratch. What follows was the one I expected to like the least, and I ended up absolutely loving the shit out of it. The pure deadpan humor that Rose has along with her little anecdotes when she's shooting or reloading her gun gave me a good laugh. And as I progressed through her section of the game, you would think she'd be a little phased or upset with these haters, that's what she calls them, not me, trying to kill both her and Alan, but she still remains unfazed and overzealous for her one true love, even taking note of how many sugars that he likes in his coffee, and that he does not like tea. Rose's section is going to be the most straightforward out of all of these chapters, as it's basically a giant shooting gallery. Now, they don't skimp on the ammo, so you can go to town with all the enemies, especially since they give you a fully automatic shotgun. Her world also has this pink filter over everything that gave it a unique flair. Even though all the locations are reused from the main game, I still found her story to be a funny and enjoyable ride. The second expansion sees a return of a familiar face in Jesse Faden from Control. This is the one that I think I was most excited for simply because we got to see the return of Jesse for the first time in nearly five years. Jesse shows up just outside of Coffee World trying to find her long lost brother that was taken by a shadowy government agency. And if you've played Control, you're pretty familiar with the plot because that's exactly what the plot for that game is. Jesse's section sees a return to the old gameplay of Alan Wake 2 with you having to use a flashlight and a pistol to traverse through Coffee World, taking out enemies along the way. You'll also run into Sheriff Breaker from the main game who is also investigating the area. I like the little bit of puzzles that we do have in this area and won't even require me to dig around my little noggin and remember how to do some math and some comprehensive reading. There's also a little small stealth section, but after that you've basically cleared her episode, and sadly there really isn't much of revelations or story details for Jesse. but it still was nice to see her back after all these years, and hopefully we get to see more of her in Control 2, which we know Remedy is working on currently. The third and final episode in true Remedy fashion is trippy, confusing, and all sorts of weird, but in all the right ways. The start of this sees you taking the role of Sean Ashmore, who is the real-life actor of Tim Breaker. And here we see that he is filming for his next movie, Timebreaker, with writer Sam Lake just off screen. And slowly you realize that the movie world and the real world start to merge into one another, with Sean getting sucked into another dimension, sort of kind of like how Alan would when he would write stuff in the main world. His whole plot and story is trying to track down the Master of Worlds, Warland Door, sort of like how he was in the main game in the Dark Place, when you're trying to find his identity and he's got this whole whiteboard trying to work everything out. Tim's sections of the game were a lot more horror focused with this eerie creepy tone of mystery and sci-fi elements mixed in with some action, so you'll be traversing this damp and dark woods one minute, 
And then the next, you're in a black and white rendition of the Ocean View Hotel from the main game. And then towards the end of this episode, it flips and does a complete 180 with you being teleported into an old arcade-like style game, moving from side to side, taking down enemies with your flashlight and pistol. It finally ends with you playing an old text-style video game where you're basically reading dialogue prompts that then would move you to the next section or set of conversations. It was pretty cool. I liked how it was more, like I said, the horror-focused mystery sci-fi vibe, and I loved the whole little touch of having Sam Lake be the actual writer slash director. I all thought it was pretty meta, and that's really what I think Remedy does well, is all these weird meta callbacks and and it's just really cool. I think that they do a great job at it. While all these add-ons might be short, I think they serve as a nice balance from the tense gameplay in the main game where you're constantly picking up ammo and supplies, having to ration which guns to use for certain encounters, or having to try to work out things on the evidence board. Here, they do away with the majority of that and just say, go shoot shit. And I can appreciate when a game is just trying to have fun, be silly, and not take itself too serious. And I think that Remedy nailed it here. Having the nice contrast to the main game offers a lot in this package, and to dismiss it just because it doesn't connect to the main story is a little silly to me, which I have seen some people doing. This allows Remedy to experiment around, try some new things, and if studios weren't allowed to maybe experiment, we might not get things like Herald of Darkness, which was one of the standout moments not just for this game, but from the whole past year of gaming. With the Lake House launching sometime this fall, I think that this expansion plus the addition of the final draft mode, which is this game's version of the new game plus, that changes up some of the dialogue as well as adds a few more hidden secrets along the way is more than enough time is more than enough to keep most gamers satisfied and busy this one is going to be on the shorter side but i felt it was nice to do a fun little short review as i'm also currently working on my review for the final shape which should be out in the next couple of weeks but i'm not going to make any promises on that because i do want to take my time and dive into as much as possible as i can i might have a few more previews and reviews lined up so make sure to hit that subscribe button drop a like on the video and if you did make it this far, I just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day. This has been my review for Alan Wake 2's first expansion, Night Springs. Thank you for watching. One can never tell in Night Springs.